Hello. In this video, we are going to do an example uh, analysis problem of a MOSFET multi stage amplifier. So, I have drawn a two stage MOSFET amplifier uh, with different resistor values. Um, I have written down my process parameters uh, KN1 equals 0.5 milliamps per volt square. Uh, that will be the um, MOSFET transconductance parameter of transistor M1. KN2 is 0.2 milliamps per volt square. Uh, the threshold voltage for both transistors is equal to 1.2 volts and lambda is equal to zero for both transistors, meaning we are neglecting channel length modulation effects. And so we want to calculate uh, the small signal amplifier parameters, the voltage gain, input resistance, and output resistance for this amplifier. Um, we're going to start our analysis by finding the bias point. So we're going to do our DC analysis. Because our, in particular, our bias current is going to allow us then to calculate the transconductance, uh, which we're going to need for um, further, further analysis. Uh, the first thing, um, actually, before I do that, let me just say, you know, so one, determine the amplifier stages. And in this case, this will be a, first one is a common source because the signal, uh, the input signal is applied to the gate and the output is taken out of the drive. So this is a common source followed by, um, and the following is a common drain or source follower. Those will be the two stages. Next, I'm going to do my DC analysis with the objective of finding the drain current, the quiescent drain current for both transistors. Um, so I'm going to start by connecting my positive supply, which I have not connected. Uh, but we can see that it has dual supplies, B plus and B minus, plus minus five volts. With that, I can calculate uh, my gate voltage for transistor M1, VG1, which is as a result of voltage division. Notice that the resistance looking into the gate of the transistor is infinity. Therefore, there's a perfect voltage divider between R1 and R2, and the voltage VG1 will be equal to V minus plus V plus minus V minus times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Or in other words, negative 5 plus 10 times 135k divided by 383k plus 135k. Which is equal to uh, negative 2.4 volts. Um, and I can see that my uh, Vs1, the voltage at my source for transistor 1, uh, it's going to be equal to V minus plus the voltage drop across RS1, which is ID1 times RS1. Or in other words, minus 5 plus uh, 3.9K times ID1. Now my VGS1 is equal to VG1 minus VS1, which is negative 2.4 volts, minus minus 5 makes plus 5, minus 2.9K times ID1, or 3.4 um, minus 3.9K ID1. And with the value of VGS, I can now write the equation for ID, assuming the transistor is in saturation region, which is a reasonable assumption if you have an amplifier. I will have ID1 is going to be equal to one half of KN1 times VGS1 minus VT1 squared, or in essence, equal to one half of 0.5 milli times VGS1 is 
now let's keep going on k times high t1 minus 1.2 volts squared then it says if I solve that equation I get the result that IB1 is equal to 0 0.5 or 15 sorry milliamps or I'm going to round it to 0.2 milliamps to ease my calculations later on and um, with that I can now calculate the value for VG2 which is equal to V plus minus the voltage drop across RD1 which is um, RD1 times IT1 or 5 minus um, 0.2 milli times 16.1 K which gives me 2.6 volts and my uh, S2 is going to be equal to uh, V minus plus RS2 ID2 or negative 5 plus uh, 8K times ID2 so with that I can get an expression for VGS2 which is going to be VG2 minus VS2 or 2.6 minus minus 5 makes plus 5 minus 8k times IV2 or 7.6 minus 8k times IV2 and now I can write the expression for IV2 assuming M2 is in saturation as well as one half of Kn2 Vgs2 minus Vt2 squared or one half times uh, Kn2 is 0.2 milli times 7.6 minus 8k times Iv2 minus 1.2 squared and that gives me Id1 being equal to 0.5 milliamps sorry I did 2 0.5 milliamps uh, with these values I can now calculate the um, expression for GM1 and GM2 so let's go and circle them so we lose track of them and I'm going to do that on a new page so my GM1 is 2 times the square root of KN1 ID1 and GM2 is 2 times the square root of KN2 ID2 this is 2 times the square root of KN1 was 0.5 milli and ID1 was 0.2 milli in the second case, 2 times Km2 was 0.2 milli and Im2 was 0.5 milli. So we can see that they're both the same value for Gm, and that value is 0.632 milliamps per volt. Or milli siemens, milli ohms to the minus 1, however you want to express it. Alright, so now I uh, am ready to calculate the gain. Uh, input resistance and output resistance since this is a two-stage amplifier I can do that separately for stage one which uh, we said was a common source amplifier uh, the gain for stage one AV1 is equal to minus GM1 RD1 uh, because notice that the uh, source resistance was bypassed was fully bypassed by capacitor CS and so for purposes of calculating the AC gain uh, we can assume that, that this is an AC short basically so there's no resistance connected uh, to the source for purposes of calculating the gain, the AC gain. Uh, so this is going to be equal to minus 0.632 milli times in RD1 is 16.1k Which is essentially equal to 
oops, minus 10.17, my R in uh, for stage 1 uh, is equal to R1 in parallel with R2, we go back to our circuit, R1 in parallel with R2 since the resistance looking into the gate uh, is equal to 0, and again this is going to be my R in. 1, which is also the resistance of the overall circuit. Um, so essentially 383k in parallel with 165k, sorry, 135k, which is 99.8 kilo ohms, so close to 100 kilo ohms, and my R out. 1 is RD1 or 16.1 kilo ohms. For my second stage, which was a, um, a common drain or source follower, my AV2 is approximately equal to plus 1, input resistance approximately equal to infinity, output resistance approximately or RS2 in parallel with 1 over GM2. Which is approximately equal to uh, 1.33k. And with this, I can uh, put everything together uh, to calculate the overall circuit characteristics. My overall gain is going to be AV1 times AV2. Um, And if I want to keep into consideration my loading factors, um, then I will have to uh, basically have the possibility of three loading factors if I go back to my circuits. There is basically the loading between RS, which is 4 kilo ohms, and the input resistance of the first stage, which we just calculated was around 100 kilo ohms. So therefore, there isn't going to be much loading there. I'm just going to ignore that input loading factor. Um, in the case of the output loading factor, I may have more of a loading factor there because the output resistance um, is going to be RS2 in parallel with 1 over GM, which we just calculated was 1.33k, and RL is 4k. And then there is the loading between the two stages, uh, which is determined by the output resistance of the first stage and the input resistance of the second stage. Since the input resistance of the second stage is equal to infinity, I can ignore that loading factor as well. And so basically, um, I'm going to say this multiply times um, RL divided by R out 2 plus RL. And so this is going to be. Um, essentially minus 10.17 multiplied times 4k divided by 1.33k plus 4k. Which is minus 10.6. My overall input resistance is going to be equal to the input resistance of the first stage, which is infinity. Sorry, which is um, R1 in parallel with R2, which we just calculated to be 99.8 kilograms. Then my output resistance is going to be equal to R out of the second stage, uh, which was RS2 in parallel with R2 and GM2, which we just calculated to be around 1.33 kilograms. So, this gives me the overall characteristics of my multi-stage amplifier.